good, good afternoon and thank you for inviting me and uh, attend my presentation on advances in functional material conference 2021 in Jeju. Uh, my name is Young Tae-jeon and I'm working as an assistant professor at the Korea Maritime and Ocean University. Uh, today, I will introduce one of my recent research that is a uh, flexible display devices based on the quantum dot nanocrystal materials with cyta passivation layer. I think this is uh, one of our first uh, meaningful work because uh, a very short research results uh, related with some flexible quantum dot. And flexible display have uh, received uh, significant attention owing to their potential applications to mobile and wearable electronics such as uh, smartphones, automotive displays, and wearable smart devices. Displays with a flexible form factor have uh, seen lightweight and uh, non-breakable characteristics that enable fabrication of displays on cover linear surface and allow their shape to be transformed. Uh, a few years ago, Samsung Electronics demonstrated the first curved TV based on OLED, which featured a wide field of view and high color purity and outstanding contrast. After that, Samsung launched a smartphone with the curved edge display used a curved OLED display panel with touch sensor to improve the user interface and device design. Of course, nowadays, a foldable smartphone already on the market. Although this kind of displays are marketed, but the currently available commercialized displays are mostly band displays and shape cannot be changed. However, I think the next generation display will be transformable into various forms and I believe this research will be have create a new world. As a contents, I will cover various subjects. Uh, firstly, quantum dot material itself shortly and after that uh, devices and mainly performance of the flexible QLED will be shown more detailly. Uh, as you know, uh, quantum dots are Florence semiconductor nanocrystal with a diameter range from 2 nanometer to 10 nanometer. There are a lot of uh, quantum dot core material include uh, cadmium selenide, indium phosphide, zinc sulfide, perovskite, and so on. Uh, for the advances on the quantum dot, core shell is key technology to noble high performance quality. Uh, these clo uh, colloidal quantum dots have a prominent optical and electrical property that is a contained narrow full width set high maximum and high photoluminance quantum merit and broad light absorption range. The band gap of quantum dot are easily tuned via particle size control and composition control. These prominent properties show the possibility of quantum dot material for next generation photo and electroactive materials for various applications uh, such as uh, solar cell, LED, and photo detector, and biomarker, and so on. Quantum dot light emitting diode QLEDs exhibit the unique optoelectronics properties including color tunability and outstanding color purity and high quantum yield over 70% and 
and total stability and make them ideal for novel, flexible display systems. The cadmium based quantum dots are used as a standard material for various research from their prominent optoelectronic properties, such as uh, easy publications and good emission peak, a very narrow FWHM, and high stability. However, this kind of heavy metal composed material are uh, strictly prohibited via various regulations, especially the ROHS. So, people start to interest about the uh, heavy metal-free quantum dot materials are rapidly increased for the manufacturing of optical, electrical, and bio-related end product. There are several candidate uh, substances, but one of them is uh, indium phosphoride quantum dots. Although there are limitations with blue color, but still very strong candidate. Uh, indium phosphoride quantum dot is uh, treated as a suitable alternative of cadmium based quantum dot materials from their intrinsic low toxicity and broad band gap controllability from entire visible range to near infrared ranges. In the case of green color, indium phosphoride quantum dot their optical performance were reached for similar level with cardinal-based quantum dots and reported uh, PLQI of 95% uh, and FWHM of uh, 36 nanometer. Uh, the red color indium phosphoride quantum dot reported PLQI of 100% and FWHM of 35 nanometer. All of these high performance indium phosphoride quantum dots are synthesized with TMSP, which has a high reactivity with indium precursors. Uh, this high reactivity leads to form a magic size cluster as a intermediate which enable uniform indium phosphoride cores. Also, as I mentioned before, shell coating is an important procedure for the synthesis of high performance indium phosphoride quantum dust. Uh, the zinc, calcogenase, and gallium phosphoride are commonly used as a shell material for indium phosphoride quantum dust. Uh, especially, selenium alloy at a zinc calcognized share is the well-known procedure for uh, reducing lattice mismatch between core and share. With this strategy, various methods for synthesis of a blue color indium phosphate quantum dot were reported, uh, and the procedure are also TMSP based synthesis methods. The quantum wall structure and gallium metal alloy were conducted for blue shift of uh, indium phosphoride quantum dot. However, indium phosphoride quantum dot with the blue conditions have been reported very low PLQI of under 40%. So, the key point is green color in the process quantum dots and easily shift to red color but very difficult to blue color and the blue color we are using the early stage shell coating technique for the core size controls and uh, our pick is we can show the next slide uh, firstly green color in the phosphate quantum dot with our synthesis method, the shell structure is a zinc selenide sulfide, and we can get PLQI 80% at 550 nanometer. And 
Next is a red color indium phosphide quantum dot with our synthesis method. And shell structure is zinc selenide sulfide also. And we can get a PRQI of 81%. You can see clearly red shift of a PRQI. PR peak uh, with the shell structure at 635 nanometer. The next is blue color in the phosphoric quantum dot with our synthesis method. The cell structure is zinc sulfide based on the early stage shell coating for core size control. And we can get PRQI 51% at 483 nanometer. Uh, in the first part, as I mentioned before, the blue color is uh, still have a lot of uh, problem, and the blue color itself is uh, not a deep blue, so still there are a lot of space uh, for the research. Let's move to QLED devices. Uh, in order to understand the device structure and characteristic of QLED, we first fabricate LED using the most stable cardinal based quantum materials and optimize the relationship of HTL and EML and ETL with each layer. Uh, a three dimensional schematic diagram of the regular device structure of the solution based QLED, you can see clearly, and all solution based. Uh, a uh, layer of QLED were fabricated by using the spin coating on pixelated ITO coated glass as an uh, anode electrode with uh, 20 ohm a square. And P dot PSS as a whole injection layer was a spin coated on the substrate and back to 150 degree or 30 million in air. After that, whole transfer layer and quantum dust and zinc oxide nanoparticle was being coated in the glue box. Uh, finally, uh, aluminum with a line pattern on the top of zinc oxide layer was deposited as a cathode electrode in a high vacuum chamber uh, using the e-beam evaporations. We can get uh, a reasonable performance of a cardinal based uh, quantum uh, quantum LED, and uh, uh, each color uh, external quantum efficiency is red color is uh, twelve percent, and green color is seven percent, and blue color is even blue color is we can get uh, four percent. So cardinal is Without any struggle, yeah, the device is uh, uh, working well. And then with this kind of uh, optimizations, we can move to Indian Phosphorus Quantum Dot uh, LED. As next uh, approaching, manufacture QLED device using Indian Phosphorus based uh, Quantum Dot by understanding the characteristic of a QLED device using cardinal based quantum dot. The fabricating process was very similar to the cardinal based QLED, but the characteristics of indium phosphoric quantum dot were much more sensitive than the cardinal based quantum dot. So it was not easy, especially it is more sensitive to oxygen. So the front and behind treatments of the Indian phosphorus quantum dot material is very very important and since it is less dispersed than the quantum dot, uh, cardinal based uh, quantum dot when it was a spin cast on the substrate so we have to pay more attention to the uh, spin coating job also it was more difficult to manufacture to the device because the Indian phosphorus quantum dot was more easily damaged by UV light. Uh, with the CIE color space of uh, indium phosphoride QLED shows a uh, 557 nanometer of green color, 
6.2 nanometer of lead color and 490 nanometer blue color. Uh, although the PL and EL results was a slightly different, but the shift range is enough to be understood. However, the blue color is not the true blue color, but the cyan color. So the blue color in the phosphoric content that requires more material research. Now we can move to flexible indium phosphide QLED. In short, uh, demonstrate a faster, effective, and reproducible way to product a flexible green indium phosphide QLED in water for, for the first time. The resulting green emitting flexible QLED on plastic exhibit the um, external quantum efficiency of a point. 9% and the maximum illuminance of uh, 1500 an ultra thin film of a cytop on our processor uh, propolymer was used as an uh, encapsulation layer on the top of uh, QLEDs that allowing the flexible QLED to operate in water in for 40 minutes Cytab is a soluble propolymer with excellent water and oil repellency along with the chemical and thermal resistance, mechanical strength, and the electrical property as a gate insulator. Thus, Cyta was selected as a flexible encapsulation layer to fabricate waterproof flexible QLEDs. In addition, Cytab exhibit outstanding behavior as a flexible encapsulation layer compared to various uh, polymers such as a PMMA, PVA, PDMS, and SUA. So we, we choose this one for our devices. And we investigate the Cytab layer with a thickness of hundreds of nanometer because polymer layers with a thickness exceeding 780 nanometer could be decoupled from the stiff glass substrate, exposing the device to water or oxygen. Also, we investigated the stability of indium phosphoride quantum dots with, uh, with and without cytop coating by immersing the quantum dot in water. The degradation of a normalized PL intensity and PLQI is defined as a number of a photon emit as a fraction of the number of photon observed was obser observed as a function of immersion time in water. Flexible QLED were fabricated as same with the structure of a QLED on glass. Initially, ITO on PET substrate were patterned like a ITO pattern on glass using conventional photolithography method. Each of layers such as a PWSS and HTR was spin coated and baked at 100 degrees Celsius for 2 hours to prevent the plastic deformation of ITO and PET substrate. The procedure of coating of quantum dust and zinc oxide and deposition of aluminum metal were the same for the glass. Cytab has an encapsulation layer on the top of aluminum film of a QLED was spin coated followed by the baking at 80 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. The illuminance continuously increased with the increasing operating voltage, reaching 6,000 candela per meter scale at 7 voltage. The external quantum efficiency was also maintained well in the illuminance range of 70 to 800 candela per meter square. The waterproof behavior of a cytop coated in the phosphoric QLED on PET substrate. The peak external quantum efficiency and the current efficiency of the device submerged in water was approximately 39%. This means that the cyta coated QLED still work after being exposed to water. 
The movie and picture shows a photograph of lightning, cytop encapsulated flexible QLED with a bending radius of 5 mm in water. After 40 minutes of immersion, an average of external quantum efficiency of cytop coated QLED was 43% lower than before immersion, and device still emit light. In contrast, the external quantum efficiency of the device without cyta encapsulation was reduced by 80% after one minute of water immersions compared to before immersions. And some devices emit no light eventually. We had a lifetime test of a flexible QLED with a cyta encapsulation film in air based on the time decay model before immersion in water. A fixed 6.7 mA per cm square. Our initial luminance was decreased to 0.95 over one hour. That means it allowed flexible QLED to be tested on waterproof behavior in water without its self-degradation at the initial current density. So, uh, after 40 minutes of uh, immersion in water, the luminance of the flexible QLED with the bending radius of 5 mm decreased significantly. And nearby half of the luminance area did not emit light. This might be attribute to penetrations of a water molecule in the active layer interface induced by the mechanically stressed devices. The lifetime at, the, at which the ear intensity of the QLED decreased to 50% of the initial value should be measured and we found that about 40% reduction of the current density of the QLED correspond to half of illuminance after 12 to 20 minutes of uh, water immersion. As a result, the lifetime of a flexible QLED to be almost uh, 17 minutes. Finally, speaking of the novelty of this study, there have been very few studies on flexible device using cadmium-free quantum dot, and it is all briefly mentions that the flexible device operated without any accurate data. We compared the parameters of the actual flexible devices with the fabricate on the glass substrate and put it in water to show its practicality. Thank you for your attention. Also, if you have any question about this presentation, please contact me by email below and I, I will get back to you. I hope you have a good time at the rest of the conference. Thank you.